you know, if you feel like you're at the end of the line in your relationship, you will be in a new relationship, whether it's your current relationship turned anew or whether it's an actual ending of your relationship and a new relationship with someone else. And so. Did you push record? Thanks so much for tuning into our second act with Paige and Selka. Today, our focus returns to love and relationships, and I am so happy to introduce a new content expert to Second Act TV, Marla Mattinson. Marla, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. This is such a fabulous platform. You know, you everybody's in for a real treat. We are so lucky to have Mar Marla. She is a relationship and intimacy expert. And while everyone brings something unique to the table, uh, this is going to blow you away, did me. <laughs> uh, Marla, let's talk about your platform, how you utilize your mathematics and neurosciences background to help people, you know, heal relationships. Yes, it's, it's not a typical pathway, right? People, when they think about relationship, they don't automatically say, oh, and math, right? <laughs> yeah, oh, that fits perfectly together. No, that's it, typically it's psychology or even psychiatry, right? So, I mean, although I have studied quite a bit of psychology, my background is really in pattern recognition. And so mathematics is all about recognizing patterns. And this is why people get really frustrated with math is because if they don't see the pattern right away, they get frustrated and they want to just quit. And guess what happens in relationship? If you can't see the pattern and the pathway through in order to have a loving, open, honest conversation with your partner, for example, then most people want to go back to their old default settings, which is stuff it under the carpet or withdraw or even get into an argument in order to just sort of avoid the realness of looking at how the patterns are not fitting together. And so one of the things I like to do is I help couples translate for each other. So not only am I a pattern recognition uh, expert, I'm also sort of a translator for couples so they can hear the truth of what their partner is actually meaning underneath the words they're saying and vice versa. Well, and, and, you know, to bring our viewers up to date, the re how I found you, you know, I, uh, on our platform, we've received a lot of questions from men uh, wondering why so many women file for divorce, meaning like, it, I think it was quoted 70 to 80%. And I was looking for somebody to talk to that. And that's how I found you. And after I talked with you, it's like, I don't even want to talk about that. Why? <laughs> I want to talk about why not? You know, how, how do we save a relationship? And, you know, and that's when you said, uh, well, once you are at that point, it's important yeah. to see your partner new again and, and break those patterns you just referenced. Yes, I, I loved that conversation that we had. We just, I felt like we could have a slumber party over yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and instead of talking about sort of the negativity on why that's happening, how about, like you said, how do we save that? And so the idea is, you know, if you feel like you're at the end of the line in your relationship, you will be in a new relationship whether it's your current relationship turned anew or whether it's an actual ending of your relationship and a new relationship with someone else. And so the idea here is how do we transform ourselves enough at the end of a relationship in order to launch into the next version of how are we going to be together as a couple? And the amazing thing is your partner doesn't have to do anything different. This is what's so slightly bizarre, okay? And this is all about taking personal responsibility for the relationship you really desire. And so what does that mean? That means who do you need to be in order to have the relationship you desire? Because the truth is that most people sort of sort of put it on their partner. Well, if you were a little different, our relationship would be amazing. And yes, that's true, but what if I'm a little bit different. What if, for example, you know, uh, here, look, I'll, I'll back it up a little bit. When I was about 14 years old, we went to family therapy because we had some issues in the family. Okay. And the therapist at the time, you know, he activated me in a way that I did not enjoy. And at 14, I was very stubborn and which 
might still be true. And, um, and he said something to me that made me want to leave the room. And I said, well, I don't need to stay here. I'm going to wait in the other room. And he said, well, you know, Marla, wherever you go, there you are. Mm -hmm. And I was so angry when he said that, but he was so right. And I just couldn't, you know, at 14, I just could not let that in at the time. But now many, many moons later, he was very correct. And so the idea is if you're at the end of the line in your relationship, what if you use that as a way to say, you know what, wherever I go, there I am. So that means I am part of whatever the dynamic is between the two of us. So if I can shift enough internally to number one, see my partner with fresh eyes, meaning I have what we call selective amnesia, which is, right, so you only remember intentionally the good things from the past. And you really actively let go of, oh, he's like this, I know he's always gonna show up like this, or she's always gonna be like that. You let go of all of that. And you really intentionally only remember the positive things and bring that into the present moment. And that takes a lot of effort. If you can do that, you will watch your partner change before your eyes. It's pretty phenomenal. And then the, the other, yeah, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, I was just going to say, and then the other thing is other than internally seeing with your part, your partner with fresh eyes, externally speaking new types of words. So instead of any kind of negative reinforcement with your words, use positive reinforcement with anything, any little thing that your partner's doing that is working for you, that you highlight that. Oh, I really love it when you opened that door for me the other day. I, it just made me feel special and I really appreciated it. Thank you. Because partners really actually wanna know what is gonna make you happy. Stop talking about what's not making you happy and start talking about what is making you happy that they're doing. Yeah, no, that's great. What I was going to say earlier uh, is that what's what's great about this, it just struck me, you can take action, as you said, on your own. It doesn't require sitting down and we know we have to go to therapy, you know, we're in this together, we both have to work on, I mean, you still do right. eventually, but you can take action on your own to create change. I think that's, that's, that's brilliant. <laughs> It's, it is. It is. And it's, you know, it's a different way to look at relationship, which is if you really start to use your relationship as the vehicle for your own personal transformation, then you'll start to see, oh, well, if I didn't get activated in a negative way when my partner does or says this one thing, then it wouldn't be it wouldn't be something in me that needs to be addressed. If I'm getting activated, that means I am getting activated. It's not his fault. It's not my partner's fault. It's that there's something in me that doesn't like what's happening. And therefore it's for me to take a look inside. Well, what did happen? How, how did I get upset about this thing? I mean, we can use any number of examples. Like, I mean, even just today. So I, we were driving in the car, Julian, my partner, love life and business partner, he was driving and we were going to the farmer's market. And, you know, every once in a while, I get a little like clingy to the side uh, in the car, like, oh, watch out for that thing, you know, because I get a little, I might, I may or may not have some control issues. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, I know exactly how you feel. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm not sure if you can relate at all, but totally. <laughs> <laughs> so when the control comes out, because I feel like if I was driving, I would do this. Okay. So sometimes I get a little activated in the car. And so instead of me, saying, hey, can you do this instead or watch out for this thing? If I can intentionally say to myself, I'm safe, he's a great driver, he always gets us there safe, and I have an internal dialogue with myself, instead of outwardly with my words getting controlling, instead I go inside and then if let's say it's really hard for me, because at times it is hard to let go of that, I can say and take responsibility, hey, just so you know, sweetheart, I'm feeling a little anxious. Would you, would you be willing to give a little extra room in between us and the other cars? Or would you be willing to drive just a little slower? Not because you're not doing anything, you know, bad or wrong at all. It's just, I'm feeling a little anxious right now. So I would love a little extra room in, in the car for us. And, and so, I mean, saying it in that way gives him the opportunity to say, oh my gosh, of course I want to help lower any anxiety that you have rather than thinking I'm doing a bad job driving. 
Does that, that make sense? Is, that is such a great example. I'm laughing because in my in my marriage that I left after 25 years, that was one of our biggest fights. Was when we drove together. He, I, nothing. The minute we got in the car, I was bitching, and I I, I said to myself uh, that in any, any new relationship, I consciously would not criticize driving anymore. So now I just sit there and go, no, he's you're, he's a good driver, and we're not going to get killed. <laughs> Yeah, and you know what? I just want to mention because I think honestly, a lot of women have this issue is we want to feel like we can surrender into our partner. And then when we get into the car, we don't want to give up the control. And it's really a challenging situation. I have gotten to the point in my life where sometimes I'll say, babe, you're an excellent driver. I'm feeling anxious. I'm going to put my seat down. And I'm going to literally (laughs) close my eyes because I totally trust you, but I just am going to enjoy the ride because I cannot enjoy the ride with my eyes open. Yeah. (laughs) So I'm going to lay it down. And, and I'm going to trust you because you're totally trustworthy driving. But it, this is a very common issue. Women getting really controlling in cars and it, it, it's, it's so challenging because we want to have our partners understand that we love them and we trust them. And then what happens when we don't and how we communicate that is typically pretty ugly until we learn ways to be a little more kind. Like you learn to be able to say like, Oh, I trust him. It's all good. But they also feel it. They feel the energetics of it. So I like to name it. I like to practice saying it out loud in a way that I'm taking responsibility. Like, Hey, I'm sure you probably feel this. I'm feeling a little anxious in the car. So I'm going to do two things. I'm going to number one, totally let you know I trust you. And number two, I'm going to lay the seat down so I don't have to watch the road like a hawk, you know, because I it looks like I don't trust you when I do that. Yeah, that, no, that's great. Uh, well, we, we are coming to the end of our first segment. I, I know I can talk to you forever. And of course, we're going to do several other segments. So I want to close out this one. Uh, Anything else you want to add uh, as a final thought on this segment for our viewers before we come back? You know, I just want to say one more time that if you are at the end of the line in your relationship where you feel like I have to get out of here, if you just leave without taking the time to observe yourself in this relationship, you will bring all those issues with you into the next one. So I say stay long enough in order to decide for yourself that you have observed how you show up and what your patterns are with this person that you love. And if you still have any amount of love left in you in the relationship, stay and stay long enough so that you can really observe yourself and then make a good choice moving forward. That that is wonderful. Absolutely. Uh, Marla, we will link, of course, to all your information so our viewers can get in touch with you directly. Uh, I'm sure, you know, thousands and thousands can use your services as they have. I think you've helped over 12,000 couples worldwide. And we'll see you on our next segment of Our Second Act with Paige and Silka. Wonderful. For more love and relationship advice, please go to our website, secondact.tv. And if you haven't already done so, be sure to subscribe to our channel. Button's right here. See you next time.